All right, everybody, this is Breedence, and welcome back to another Blood Bowl 2 FTBBL match. The Waffle Warriors return for another week. Week 8, I believe. And we're back on the home front at Insanity Isles. And we're taking on the Masters of Stink Nurgle. This... I don't know, I think I mess up at the end of this match, but the build-up to, like, to that point is, um... Interesting to say the least. Nurgle is annoying. Um, it's a hard team to play. Uh, it's an annoying team to play against. Uh, disturb foul appearance is a nasty skill that when it does start to pop up is annoying. Uh, there's a decent amount of regen which helps them out a lot, and disturbing presence makes uh, passing plays pretty shit. Uh, luckily, as orcs, we don't have to worry about that last part that much. We're going against Archer 30 Day, who I have played a fairly large amount of times um, since the league started. Been around for a while, that guy. And he knows his stuff about Blood Bowl, that's for sure. So, Nurgle sets up to hit us a lot here in the first turn. They're really just going to be trading blocks. We're two teams that don't really drive around uh, ball theatrics. We're mainly just here to punch people. So two grindstones hitting each other a lot is pretty much what you're going to get here. Now, Feral Thalad, he actually did a lot of work this, uh, this match. Fake Crash taking another nap at the beginning of the match. As is tradition. And yeah. We do kill a rotter on uh, one of our first blocks, I want to say. And Nurgle has a pretty rough time of picking up the ball right off the bat. Some pretty mid blocks. Other than, of course, getting rid of one of my guard pieces, which is pretty big for him. Because uh, we both don't really have too much guard, so every piece of guard matters. Yeah, Tukatonga Thalad immediately goes down dead as a doornail. Uh, Rodders having Decay is pretty... Decay is a rough skill. But yeah, I feel kind of pressured to re-roll there immediately. Uh, maybe I should have saved it. Hard to say. I really don't want to be in a position where I'm going to get a uh, two clobbered by Nurgle. I'll try to tamper with some of his free pieces and send our Blitzer further back. He stuns himself next to the ball because, of course, he does. Maybe it's better to leave Coco like just back here as a threat for if he doesn't pick up the ball. Hard to say. Beast gets a nice stun off. <coughs> the uh, Nurgle Warriors are going to get some decent hits. And yeah, despite... I figured that once that happened, he was going to start... Maybe going right, but Archer decides to go into the center. This is where I'm not sure... And maybe I'm wrong, I'm not... If anybody wants to let me know in chat, feel free. I'm not really sure why he decided to go mid. Because I feel like he could have probably had a better chance trying to break right. But. That might just be me. We do manage to put some pressure in the backfield over here. Try to mark up the ball carrier where we can. And that's the main thing is that we try to pressure and we're trying to sink the uh, encircle Nurgle so that they have to come through us. 
considering we have a pretty decent strength advantage at the moment. Not much of one, but uh, I think like maybe an extra strength four. Which is something. Even with the limited guard. But yeah, we kind of get in this awkward box. Nurgle doesn't really move too much. He's able to keep the Savage with the ball. Goes for a foul here. Gets a stun off for him, which is good for him. We start to move to the side and try to take pot shots in the back here. We go for a blitz on the on Spore Crowd Dialed right there. Yeah, again, just pressuring and encircling the Nurgle so that they have a hell of a time getting through. Give them less blocks possible. And we just kind of grind them down here. As you can see, the Nurgle pushes back a little bit, but we, uh... It usually lasts for long. We start removing a bunch of the rotters, which is nice. Strength bust that guy. Because less pieces on the field is less pieces. He just re-roll a block there, which pushes one of my black works back. And I think maybe he's going to try to go right. But again, he's got all these pieces free to you lift down. And I guess he just feels more secure in the cage. Um, I definitely think if Archer had tried to... Uh, Go right earlier. He might have been in a better spot at this point. Because <clears throat> now he's just got to deal with the uh, nappy dog that is uh, that is orcs that just aren't going to quit. We try to put it. Give a push down here to try to knock the Pestigore into range with the block guard piece. Doesn't work, unfortunately. And I didn't feel like it was worth re-rolling. Which could have also been an overset on me in this part. Uh, I feel like if I was a little more greedy at trying to get the ball, this first half might have paid out better for me. But we do get a lot of pushes and... Uh, Unfortunate outcomes. And now here's the part where Nurgle definitely wants to, I think, go right and free themselves from this hell that is the center of the pitch. Free rolls there and gets what he needs. Manages to knock the black work back. He runs this Pestigore up. And he goes for the push there. Ah, uh, who is that? Sp Sporzoer. Yeah, he tries to hand off to the rotter, I guess. To maybe the rotter. Yeah, the rotter could maybe sit right here. I'm not sure what the game plan was there. Um, but yeah, Nurgle is definitely locked down now. And because this guy didn't move further down, I don't think he could have. Um. This Pestigore really wasn't going to escape anywhere. So. You know. We hit back that guy. And yeah, nothing too crazy, I think, happens the rest of the first half. We do manage to, uh... Badly hurt a Nurgle warrior, and he regens and sits on the sideline for the rest of the turn. But, um, it is pretty crucial for us. Also, Tiny, like, in the beginning of the match, fucking died. Which, at this point, he was busted armor, so... Or Nurgled, rather. So, he's kind of a detriment going into these bigger bash matches. 
Um, and to be honest, I didn't feel like using the Apo on him. Uh, with him already being niggled. Kind of just saves me the trouble, to be honest. And we did also have the first match of one of our new line orcs. So, uh, where is he? Yeah. Pinstripe Potorork. But yeah, Nurgle kind of, we grind with them in the middle for a lot of the first half. Not a whole lot happens for either side. Just two big brutes smacking each other around and not really getting anywhere with it. Well, better or for worse. And we managed to injure the rot spawn here, which is pretty big for us having the troll go down. Regen fails too. And that pretty much takes care of his bench, so. However, us being down our uh, troll also takes care of our bench. Look, we are guard piece does come back going into the second half. As a whole lot of nothing got done. And yeah. I'm gonna focus on the frustrating part of this half. Because this half is a lot of the same. Uh, I feel like I should have been more aggressive with my push here too. We start to push Nurgle back. We have opportunities to move up. And we do get a lot of SVP this match. Compared to Nurgle. Which is a guy that's looking pretty going in against into the later half of the season. But at this stage of the game, I need to be more aggressive in the getting points. Like, we need more points to ensure that we make it the playoffs. Um, Nurgle's able to push through. And we just can't pick up this ball. I think we spent five or six turns trying to pick up this ball and just keep rolling ones from Nitrous. Which is... It's better that it happened against Nurgle because Nurgle can't really capitalize on that. Uh, if we can't, if we don't let him through, but you know, it's also like what the fuck. That should the hard part should not be getting from getting the ball into our hands, but you know, sometimes Snuffle decides to have a laugh. We do manage to finally pick up, and we move over here, trying to go up the middle ourselves, and we fail the GFI. And I'm like, okay, I'll just reroll it so that we're in a safer spot, and we fail again. My the the, the main reason, because I thought about this too, the main reason I want to go here is because uh oh, okay, there we go. Uh. Is because of this guy who could have moved to this spot with a blitz and mark him up. So I figured if I run to the side, there's less chance. I mean, the rotter could dodge out and hit me, but, you know, it's a pretty unlikely dodge. That's a little easier to, to imagine than just a regular 3+. plus. So. Plus, I'm less afraid of the rotter than I am the Pestagor. But yeah, this this side doesn't hold this that great this half. And our forces do get split up, which, you know, is something that I desperately need to work on with forks, is my positioning. In general I need to work on my positioning, but it it's been very transparent with forks. Because that is their one of their main things. It's why I struggle with playing undead and other teams like that. But yeah, he's able to get our ball free. And, you know, we do manage to get it back and we refocus and re-isolate ourselves. I sent the Goblin up here to get absolutely maimed. And Ripper Roblin definitely does. Getting injured immediately. And I have another chance to apo him. Because he does get a movement bust, which is, you know, he's dead. Um, but... You know, Goblin's 40k, the Apo's 50k, doesn't really pay for itself. And I'll be damned if I Apo the Goblin and then something way more valuable goes down just a few moments later. 
But yeah, definitely wasn't able to protect the ball enough either, which I was getting real frustrated about. Um, just not seeing cage opportunities to best protect my ball carrier. And having to do these weird cages like this one. Because there's no real good spots for my ball carrier to go. Do get another removal here. We were able to remove a lot of riders and get a lot of SPP off of them. So I'm not that disheartened about that, but, uh, you know. I definitely think this should have been a dub, and there's, uh... I mean, there was bad dice on both sides. Uh, Nurgle got screwed on armor and on, um... Uh, their own dice as well. They failed a lot, too. Um... But there's one point particular that I want to look at. Okay, so... Not, a, not this turn. It should be this turn. Okay. No. Yeah, okay. So turn 13. We have a black work up here. Or black work. A blitzer. That is pretty much our... Going to be our uh, deep receiver. And we bring him back down. Um... Now, the reason I bring him back down is because I'm afraid that there's too much pressure down here and that he's just going to get mobbed up there. Um, instead, we get mobbed down here, and there's like a, a bit of a path that we kind of force our way through. But overall, like, that kind of screws us in the end. Over, where is it? I think it's this turn. Yeah. So we go for the one die there. We have to burn our last reroll. It's enough to get us a clear shot. And we do run up with our pure hands piece. But if this piece was, you know, had some support up there with it, it probably wouldn't have been as bad. But we get, we have to make two, re, uh, two GFIs anyway. And instead of making one a turn, I just decided to make them both that turn. And it costs us right there. Um, had I had the other orc up here, there might have been a chance to do a handoff or a pass of some sort. We would have been out of Nurgle Funk, more than likely. Uh, there's openings I could have seen in the first half where we probably could have pushed through. And maybe if we were more aggressive with rerolls or with uh, really going for the ball, we might have been able to sneak out of that shit show in the middle. And push through Nurgle's front, uh, Nurgle's line. But, uh, regardless, it does end in a nothing, nothing draw. In true Blood Bowl fashion. You know, they can't all be stupendous, but I mean, there's not really a whole lot I can grab about. I got a lot of SPP this match. Um,. His rotters just started going down like flies. And yeah, his GFIs really turned on him in the second half too. So yeah, we each suffered a death. Um, technically mine is worse, but at the same time, I actually felt great after my troll died. So I was actually like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we really did pretty well. It's just, you know, there should have been a touchdown there. Um, and being this close to finals, and, you know, this is one of the better uh, positions one of my teams has been in for finals in a while. Uh, we'll be looking at a couple levels with our MVP and with uh, the SVP we got in the match. Um, where is Young Leaves? Let's see. Yeah, looking at the leaderboard, it's kind of crunch time. Um, that'll bump us up to 4 2 2. Uh, I don't know if Paranoid played his match this week yet. No, Paranoid hasn't played his match this week yet. We play him next week. Um, other than that, I mean, I think we have a strong spot for wildcard. Even if we don't place in the top five, but we need to start getting more wins and we need to 
you know, reaffirm our position. Uh, Archer going down in a draw there is nice for us, but, you know, you still want that, uh, dove if you can grab it. I don't know. It's a, it's a tight race. Um, well, for some of us, uh, if you're the top three, I think you're in a safe spot, but you know, it's a bad luck. The last couple of weeks could cost you. But in any case, that's where we're at as of now. Um, it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks going up. We have our last three matches are humans, and then we play dark elves, and then we play Bretonians. I'm not really excited for the dark elf and Bretonian match. Uh, the human match, the town bicycle has been doing better than I think their name leads one to believe but you know they are pretty haggard they've been they've had uh they've had a lot of losses this mat this hat that ah, this season um rivers plates had a really strong start i think they've been getting beat up more recently which is good for us um because you know we kind of need to crump them <laughs> In order, and we'll be going in with. Uh, I'm assuming he's gonna buy next another reroll going into his next match. Uh, he hasn't played his match this week, I don't think. No, he hasn't. So, yeah, those are the teams we're really keen on watching. As far as knocking anyone else out, um, I mean, I guess there's a chance. I know, I think Silken lost his match this week. Yeah, so Sokin watched lost his match this week, but he does have the win over us, so if it was a draw between the two of us, uh he would still have the lead there. Um Kilgannon I think he already played, right? I don't know, he's a King's he's a King's played town bicycle, that's right. So uh we could hope that Kemri smacks around humans. Uh, he's got to play against that fucking ungodly bear, which, by the way, just as a aside, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna take a look at this fucking bear. See where he's at. I haven't actually looked at it. He's kind of steaming a bit. Yeah, this bear is fucking crazy. This bear has three levels. This is one season. In one season, he's done more than some premier players. I uh, yeah. I don't know. Fucking tame bear piling on. New meta, apparently. But that's gonna be all for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I did get a little sour at the end, so I apologize for that. I I, I gotta learn to not be so critical about myself, but I would like to do better going forward, which is the main purpose of these little dives as they were so thank you all for watching and i'll see y'all in next week's match take care everybody